Hello and welcome to this uh, question from the Chemistry Olympiad paper uh, from 2009. So because this question deals with gas volumes, it should be easy for first and second year chemists to access. Particularly in the case of first years, um, if you're coming towards the January period um, when the round one paper is generally taken. So like every single Chemistry Olympiad paper, uh, the question starts off by giving a context, um, usually to do with something in the news that year or something recent that people will have heard of, around which the chemistry in the question that they're testing is actually explored. So if you have a look at the stuff that I've uh, highlighted in the, the red box, you'll see that it's about patio heaters and uh, the idea about them producing... Um, excess carbon dioxide or unnecessary production of carbon dioxide that contributes to global warming. So it introduces hydrocarbons, the idea of their combustion, and it also talks about the amount of energy that uh, these heaters use. So if we go to the first part of the question, you can see that it uh, really is talking about V equals 24N. So I'm going to highlight the whole of part A and go through that part first. So a quick flip through the question, uh, it's quite clear that it's talking about the amount of gas. So let's have a look at the number of moles of propane contained in the cylinder. So if we take our V equals 24N and rearrange it, but if we look at the information that's given to us in the introductory um, section, it says most patio heaters are powered by small cylinders of propane gas, and a typical patio heater is designed to produce 15 kilowatts of energy runs from a cylinder containing 13 kilograms of propane. They're not, they're not giving it to us in volume, they're giving it, giving it to us in mass. So it's actually turned out to be a moles equals mass over molar mass type of calculation. So that gives us 295 moles. Then it asks you to calculate the mass of the carbon dioxide produced when all of the propane in a cylinder is burnt completely. So using the mole ratio of the complete combustion of propane, one mole of propane has um, three moles of carbon, so you get three moles of carbon dioxide. So therefore, 295 moles would yield 886 moles of carbon dioxide. So doing a quick rearrangement, that gives us um, 39 kilograms of carbon dioxide. So the next thing it wants us to work out is the total amount of heat energy released by combustion of all the propane. Now, in the introductory data, it tells us that the standard enthalpy change of combustion of propane is minus 2220 um, kilojoules per mole. So we end up with uh, 655,000 kilojoules um, for 295 moles of methane being completely burnt. So now what they want for part IV is the rate at which propane must leave the cylinder in centimetres cubed per second to the minus one to produce your 15 kilowatts, so 15 kilojoules per second to the minus one. So if we create some space now and take our heat energy released uh, and we now think how many kilojoules are required each second, it says that they're 15. So therefore, to get the number of moles per second, you divide that by 2220, and that gives you 6.76 times 10 to the minus 3 to 3 sig figs. I've kept my calculator value. So I multiply that by 24,000, which is the number of centimetres cubed in one mole of gas, which gives me 162 to 3 sig figs. And finally, what they want is the equilibrium pressure when the cylinder is only half full. So although it sounds like a calculation, in actual fact, it's just asking you to think about what's going on inside the tank. So you have your propane tank, but inside it you've got some liquid. And whether that liquid is three quarters of the way up, or halfway up, or quarter of the way up, if you're releasing liquid propane, sorry, gaseous propane, um, when the, the tank is sealed again, the valve is shut, what will happen is that the liquid that's remaining behind will simply release more vapour to try and take up the space that... Um, is now available. So in terms of pressure, it shouldn't actually change at all. 
Okay, so the pressure will therefore remain the same. So now we need to move on to part B. So this next part of the question introduces us to mercaptans. Now mercaptans are a homologous series um, where basically you take a hydrogen sulfide molecule and you replace one of the hydrogens with an, uh, an alkyl group. So it mentions ethyl um, mercaptan. It's uh, also called ethane thiol. which is, uh, as you'd expect, analogous to ethanol, with the all in the end of the name. Uh, all the difference is, is the oxygen is replaced by another group 6 atom, uh, sulfur, instead. Now these uh, mercaptans are extremely smelly. Uh, they're very, very um, smelly to humans, and we can detect them at a very, very low rate. So they add these to uh, natural gas. So alkanes such as methane, ethane, propane, actually they're quite hard to smell, they're, they're pretty much odorless. So very small amounts of um, ethyl and mercaptan are added to try to make them uh, smellier so we can sense if there's a gas leak. It's important obviously that we're able to do that. So if we sense in our house for example that there's a smell of gas or in, in a chemistry lab at school or in college that there's a smell of gas, we know to do something about it rather than let it build up and become um, an explosion wrist. So it asks you to draw a diagram to show how the atoms are bonded together in ethyl and mercaptan, and you're supposed to predict the bond angle around the sulfur atom. So for illustrative purposes only, I've drawn a three-dimensional structure of CH3, CH2, SH, and uh, also I've put in the bond angles. There's two different ones. There's obviously a 104.5 nonlinear shape around the sulfur, and then a 109.5 tetrahedral shape around the carbon. So it's not asked for in the question, so it's fair to say that they didn't ask you to do all that, but I thought I'd put it in anyway, just to illustrate as we go along. So the next thing to do is to calculate the mass of ethyl mercaptan, which must be added to 13 kilograms of propane, to produce 0.2 molecules of it per billion molecules of propane. So this is a bit of maths and units and um, orders of magnitude going on at the moment. So I'll get rid of what's on the screen at the moment so we can make some space for that. So let's start with the molar mass of our ethane thiol. And the order of magnitude we're talking about is 10 to the 9. So putting that into perspective, there's one billionth the amount of um, your ethyl and mercaptan. So one part per billion means one billionth of the amount of propane that you've got. So crunching the numbers through, for 295 moles in a cylinder, you'll need to have 0 0.02 parts per billion. So that's 295 times 10 to the power of minus 9 times 0 0.02 equals 5.9 times 10 to the minus 9 moles multiplied by the molar mass of your ethane thiol gives you 3.67 times 10 to the minus 7 grams of C2H5SH. So this final part is uh, about the Olympic flame in Beijing that you can see in the picture. So you want uh, the total mass of CO2 produced. So you've got 6,000 meters cubed of methane per hour. So there's 1,000 decimeters cubed in 1 meter cubed. So 6,000 times 10 to the power of 3 decimeters cubed per hour, which gives us um, 25,000, so 250,000 moles of gas per hour. So that's a whopping 960 million moles of CO2 in total, which gives us uh, 4,224 million grams of CO2, which is an eye-watering 4,224 tonnes of CO2 made during the course of the 16 days. Okay, so this takes us to the end of this particular clip. Hopefully you've seen how it takes you through several possible topics and it's been of use to you. Um, until next time, thanks for listening and see you soon.